Okay, guys, I'm trying. <laughs> it's like, ah. I have been working diligently all day on this. Anyway, um, I'm just, look, I'm checking in. I don't want to, I don't want to do it. I don't want to give it out until I got it just fully delivered. There's so much data. <laughs> Here, let me scoop for it. The sheer volume of data is overwhelming. It is, again, I'll just say it. It is so conclusive. It is so over the top conclusive. Uh, if you apply scientific method to it, it is absolutely 100% conclusive. And so the sheer volume of data requires me just delivering it in the right pragmatic steps, uh, giving you the simple scriptures that simply describe it. It's so obvious. And again, I've been working on it all day long, all day. I've been working on this thing. Um, anyway, but I may have to break it up into parts because, you know, this may end up being a, a long, long video. And I, uh, a lot of people, I've, I've seen a lot of people say, hey, why don't you do shorter videos? <laughs> and the answer to that is because I'm not here to get views. I'm here to give you information. So if I, if I do a video where everything's just clicking and I'm getting all the information and it's going in, I don't want to just stop and, uh, you know, and say, oh, well, I've already made it an hour. I'm just going to stop now and then come back and do it again and, and add to it. It's better just to keep going and keep that train of thought going and keep, keep the information flow just going all at once. And then anyone that doesn't want to watch a three-hour video you may certainly pause it and pick it up where you left off, right? There you go. So anyway, yeah, I've seen that. And I'm like, wow, what a weird thing to say. Okay, so anyway, so right now I've got the, the desktop and the data ready to go. Well, the data, the desktop needs a little work still. But the data is in place. But if I start right now, it's already 8.54 p.m. right now. So if I hit the record button right now, it could be 12, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1. It could be 1 before I'm just even wrapping up this this delivery. So anyway, I want I know people are waiting. That's why I'm doing a short little bit. Just to let you know, it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> it's like, ah. Yeah, it's coming all right. I'll tell you what. It's coming for sure. It is coming. So anyway, um, yeah, I don't want to give you any stuff until it, I want to give it to you all at once. Okay, so anyway, yeah, I'm sorry it's not like ready to hand off right now. I'm working on it right now. I've been working all day. Okay, so anyway, just checking in. Just bear with me. It'll be worth the wait. I mean, this is, it's conclusive. I mean, again, when I, okay, well, that was fortunate because I would have been recording that whole thing and I had a major well I had a microphone issue it, it just snapped off during the recording and my computer started prompting me you have a problem uh, with the with the microphone it's not you recording the microphone so I had to stop go back cut out reinsert so I'm reinserting right now I'm um, just again just to, I want to connect with everybody before I drop this video now listen carefully I want everyone to understand this is not research. Some people think this, this is research. That's absolutely incorrect. This is 1 Corinthians 12, the gift of knowledge, the gift of wisdom, the gift of, the gift of discernment. Now, let me show you something because, you know, some stuff has come up. There's, there, inevitably, when you do what I do and you have the, the power of the Holy Spirit in you, inevitably, no matter what, Jesus even said it, if they hated me, they'll hate you. If they called me the prince of demons, how much more will they my followers? Jesus said, blessed are you when men say all men are evil against you falsely for my namesake, for great is your reward in heaven. Now, here's what the Bible says. These signs will accompany those that believe on my name. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. They will cast out demons. Okay, so let me give you a couple short little things because I don't want people making the same mistake. I've seen some very foolish people on YouTube make and I mean it's okay let me tell you something I don't care at all as someone wants to do and says oh I'm gonna make a John and click false prophet video well that's okay go ahead and do it that's that's your thing you go ahead and do that 
Okay, God have mercy on you. But you're not exempt from the consequences. No one's exempt. I'm not exempt. No one's exempt. Now remember, these signs will accompany those that believe on my name. Sorry, I see a bunch of leaves on my hat. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Let me give you, uh, out in front of this house right here, we had dug a tunnel under this house in order to put in an entire new bathroom. And we had to jackhammer through a cement slab that was a carport. And in order to do so, we had to tunnel all the way under the house and we replaced all the plumbing. Uh, all the original plumbing had breaks in it. So we had to tunnel it out. It was filthy. And the plumber that did it, one of the guys that that did it, his name was Juan Longoria. And what he did is he had connected the pipes with the glue and stuff, but they had fallen apart. And so, you know, I was like, hey, Juan, you know, your pipes are falling apart and stuff. We can't, we can't backfill the whole tunnel until we get those pipes, you know, to where they're nice and solid. So he had to come over like four times and it was really weird. And he was like, hey, dog, and this guy used to be a gangbanger in Mexico. Very serious guy. Really nice. I got to be friends with him, but he, you know, he came from a whole different background. I've seen lots of crazy stuff, but I'm sure this guy's seen crazier. So anyway, he, uh, he was here and he was like, you know, I don't know what's going on, man. And this is what he said. I feel like God's trying to talk to me or something. And I said, well, maybe he is. And we we're out in front of this house and he started telling me about all these, you know, he's got some problems that were going on in his life. And I was just sitting there listening being a good listener, going, okay. And then he said, yeah, in my eye, man, I'm blind in my eye. And I said, you're blind in that eye? He goes, yeah, I'm completely blind. I can't see. And right then I hear the Lord say, lay hands on one. I'm going to restore sight. Okay, now listen up, everybody. You can either believe this or don't believe this. I don't care. I, I videotaped one. I'm going to show you a little segment from the uh, tunnel. You guys can either believe it or don't believe it. He was so freaked out. He didn't even, he was like, he was, he was legitimately freaked out. Um, I laid hands on Juan in front of the house here. When he told me he was blind in his eye, the Lord said, John, and I want you to lay hands on him. I'm going to restore sight. Imagine the faith it took. The Bible says, you know, we're supposed to be children of Abraham, children of faith. And so when I heard that, I knew I had to step up and lay hands on a guy that was blind. I was like, I was freaked out. I was like, okay, Juan, the Lord, I heard the Lord tell me he's going to heal your eye and I'm going to lay hands on you. And he didn't know what that meant. So it was a little awkward. He was like, and I was like, no, no, it's, I'm going to lay hands on you. The Lord's going to restore your sight. And he went, he went like this. He went, okay, dog. And he bowed his head. He called me dog. That was, he's like, okay, dog. And he bowed his head. So I laid hands on Juan, prayed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father God restore one sight and then we're right out there and after i did it i was like oh my gosh like i almost was like what have i done you know i almost felt like i made a mistake and right after i did it i looked at him and i said don't worry it'll come and i went oh. i'm like oh my god did i just tell this guy his sight was gonna come back have i lost my mind <laughs> i was like i was wrestling with the reality that I heard the Lord tell me to do it. And I said, okay, I'm going to do it. And then right after I did it, I told him, don't worry, it'll come. Your blind eye is going to come back to sight. Let me tell you something. When it came back in the tunnel, he was so freaked out. He was like, it's almost like he was twilight zone. And then after, after his sight came back in the tunnel, I'm going to show you a little clip, clip right here. After his sight came back in the tunnel underneath this house, that's where his sight returned. Within 10 minutes of that prayer, I'd say, we were under this house in the tunnel. Did you know that when a doctor uh, does stuff to someone's eye that's, you know, been traumatized, they take the bandages off in the dark. That's, they turn off the lights to take the bandages off to see how the eye's functioning. Isn't it odd that his sight came back in a dark, pitch black tunnel we had headlights on so there was a little bit of light but it was dark it was pitch black in that tunnel anyway pretty wild i'm going to show you a little clip then uh, another person that i had just met cat young she's a friend of mine now 
she and her son wanted to come down to San Antonio. They wanted to come down and get together. And I, you know, back in those days, I was like, yeah, okay. These days, it's just, I've had too many bad incidents. And so I said, yeah, come on down. I'll meet you. You know, went and met him. And uh, we went down to River Center Mall. And while, when we we're down at River Center Mall, I'm there. Her, her husband came with her. And uh, he had, here's, here's the miraculous part. Her husband hadn't planned on coming on the trip. They didn't have the finances for him to come. And it was a work thing and all that. But out of nowhere, the finances became available. So her husband came with her and her son. And when they got here, we went to River Center Mall and we went to a picnic court downtown. And uh, during that time, the Lord told me to lay hands on Dave right now. And it was a very crowded place. It was very uncomfortable. It was super crowded. It was packed. And I was like, so I had to overcome not caring what people thought about me. And I'm not going to sit there and be yelling while I'm laying hands on somebody. But still, there's no way I could stand up and lay hands on him because the Lord said, stand up and lay hands on Dave right now. He had an incurable eye problem. You, you noticing a common denominator here? Someone who's blind in one eye, someone who has an incurable eye problem. My son, Trinity, when he was a toddler, he had to have surgery on his eye, and the Lord told me to cancel it. And uh, he, told, he walked me through a series of things that Trinity's eye was healed while everybody was freaking out on me, telling me I'd lost my mind, my mom, my dad, because uh, I canceled the surgery. They were like, you've lost your mind. I said, no, I trust God. And once Trinity, my son's eye was healed, uh, nobody would give the glory to God. They were all like, oh, so what? I'm like, what are you kidding? So let me give you two of those testimonies real quick, because here's what's coming. What I'm going to deliver to you in this next video, it is not research. It is a spiritual gift. So those who want to come against it, that's okay. You're you're welcome to come against it. You can, if you want to say false prophet, that's up to you. But remember, as someone says someone casts out demons by Beelzebub, they're blaspheming the Holy Spirit. As someone says that someone's curing people or laying hands on people and their, their vision is being restored by Beelzebub, if you call someone a false prophet, you're telling them that Beelzebub's running you. That's what you're saying. So I've told people, be careful, don't be stupid, because you're rolling the dice with the only unforgivable sin. Why would you ever roll the dice with that? That's crazy. Unless you're a demon. That's the only reason. You're a demon. Now, Jesus said these things. He said, these signs will accompany those that believe on my name. So I'm going to bring some witnesses to show you. I'm going to bring you some witnesses that have been supernaturally cured. They will cast out demons. I've got a video on YouTube, uh, one in the spirit, where I confronted the demon in the middle of Starbucks. Why would a demon be confronting me if I was on his team? Uh, think, do the math. Okay. It's called Nike Dead Cheap Testimony. Here's two videos where I laid hands on people that Incurable eye problem, blind in, blind in their eye. Both of them healed. Also walked up to a waiter in a restaurant. The Lord said, walk up to Mark, lay hands on Mark right now. I didn't even know Mark was sick. The Lord said, I walked over, I said, Mark, I'm sorry, I got to do this. And I just prayed. I put an arm here and an arm here. And I prayed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, restore Mark's health. A week and a half later, Mark walked up to me in that same restaurant and he was so freaked out. He was like, how'd you know, John? How'd you know? How'd you know? I said, no, what, Mark? What are you talking about? He goes, how'd you know I had colon cancer? And remember that day you came up and you, you prayed over me and you told me I'd, I'd get well. And he goes, I had colon cancer when you did that. I went back to the hospital. They're going to do, do my course of treatment. They did a, another scan. It's gone. They can't even find it. How did you know I was sick? And I was like, I didn't know. The Lord told me to lay hands on you, Mark. Okay, so these are my testimonies. This is like a court of law. I'm required to give a 100% truthful testimony like a court of law, and that's what I'm doing. So tomorrow or tonight, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to crank out all this data that is not research. It is a spiritual 
revelation gift. No different than what you're about to see right here. Let's watch a couple quick vids. North Carolina. And I'm Dave Young. And we're here to share our testimony about how the Lord has worked in our lives uh, through Jonathan's ministry. And um, the particular time we went down to visit him in uh, San Antonio. Yes. Um, well, we, my son Nathan and I were originally going to go down and um, the Lord provided funds for us all to go as a family in a, in a miraculous way, actually. It was just a neat way how he provided all that for us. And um, Dave, why don't you explain what kind of eye problems you were having? Right. At the time, uh, for about a year, year and a half, I had a swollen optic nerve and the doctors couldn't figure out exactly what the problem was. First they looked into it as to possibly being cancerous. Then they thought, um, well, they sent me a specialist and a neuro-ophthalmologist, and he uh, recognized the swelling, but they couldn't figure out what the cause was. So they did CAD scans and MRIs and... Uh, Withdrew spinal fluid. Spinal tap, and um, they couldn't really determine what the problem was, and they weren't able to really in, in that case, they weren't able to really treat it. All they could do was give me some medication, which was really it was like a diuretic, and that uh, prevented it from getting any worse. But it just was it was there. It had pressure and caused dizziness, and it caused my uh, pain. a little bit of pain. Uh, but it wasn't um, it was something I had to, to live with loss. at the time. Well, kind of blurred vision. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, and it was in my right eye. So we went down to San Antonio. We were there with. Um, Jonathan and we were in the river I think it's the Riverwalk Mall really large mall with tons of people around us and yeah but before that we uh, went back to the hotel and the Lord was I laid down for a nap and the Lord was kind of speaking to Kath about yeah I heard uh, the Lord say ask Jonathan to lay hands on day for his eye and I said I heard it as clear as day I said okay Lord so while we're in the mall we were just sitting at a small table Jonathan was telling us a story about his son and how the Lord healed his eye when he was two and it reminded me I said yeah, Jonathan I said we we're in the hotel and uh, the Lord spoke to me and said ask you to to ask you to pray for Dave's eye and then Jonathan right. said I think he just he kind of hesitated for a second because he just kind of hurt in his spirit to go ahead and do that it wasn't it's not like uh, you know, anything was prearranged, anything like that. We just kind of were sitting there talking, and and he just got hurt in his spirit. Yeah, go ahead and, and pray for Dave. So he laid his hands on me right there in the mall, and, and uh, we just kind of well, stopped for a second. The Lord told us stand up right now. He did that. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. He laid his hands on me, and he prayed, and he and he said in the name of Jesus, you know, uh, be healed. I don't know the exact words, but just be healed. And then we kind of paused for a second, and it wasn't like any, like anything happened right away or I, or I just received my sight because I wasn't blind or anything I just had that pressure but I knew right at that moment that I should uh, just go ahead and stop taking the medication mm -hmm. you took a step of faith or I just felt like you know this it was all arranged as far as the Holy Spirit just arranged this time and this yes. and and that uh, we would be there for this time so I stopped the medication and then the way uh, when we came back, I went back to the doctor. For me, it was, I, I trusted the Lord, but I knew he was going to do something or did do something. But I also had to go back to the doctor and, and just to find out really where I was at. So then what did what did the doctor tell you? Right, he, he examined my eyes and all the swelling went down. And, and all I could share was the testimony of what happened. I went to San Antonio, met with the Jonathan Clark and we prayed together and the Lord miraculously healed my eye. It just... Uh, from that point on, I share the testimony that it's just something that the Lord did uh, through Jonathan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. So we're just um, giving a testimony that that has happened, and uh, Lord used Jonathan and told us stand up now and place hands on Dave, and Dave's eye is healed. That was three years ago. Dave, do you have any right. pain or have, pressure? No, I really don't. I, I have no reason to go back. Other than the fact that I need bifocals, so I'll be going back to, the, <laughs> I'll be going back soon. But um, I haven't had to go back to the doctor since. Mm, that's great.
Well, well we good. just praise the Lord. Lord's good, and uh, we just want to give a testimony and testify to uh, what actually happened. And Jonathan has shared this many times on the radio or in um, videos before this. So this is our um, testimony for all of you. We love the Lord, and we just praise Him. I'm thankful for what He did. Yes, Amen. Amen. Okay, so. Okay, so that was a testimony. So the Lord says, bring your witnesses. We have some witnesses. Let's look at one real quick. I'll just queue it up. Y'all can go watch this whole thing if you want. I'm just going to queue it up to where we were in the tunnel. This was taken on my iPhone. Uh, once again, uh, we're out in front of the house, and he's kind of just spilling all his problems because we're having, we were having some plumbing issues that were kind of like, you know, as a contractor, it's like, hey, bro, this is your fault. You know what I mean? You got to get this done. Yeah, if your pipes, if the fittings fell apart, that's all you. That's not me. You got to get your stuff fixed so I can continue my job. And so, you know, he had come over several times and he was freaked out. He's like, what the hell is going on, man? I've never had these kind of problems on any job ever. What's up? And I'm like, I don't know. He goes, I feel like God's trying to get to me. I'm like, maybe he is. And that's when he told me about his eye. And that's when the Lord said, lay hands on him. I lay hands on him. And I told him, hey, don't worry. Your eyesight's going to come. And I was so freaked out. I couldn't believe I even said that. I was like, did I just tell this guy his eyesight's? He's freaking blind, dude. <laughs> I was like, I can't believe I just told this guy his eyesight's going to come back. What the heck? I'm like, but I did. I'm like, <laughs> So we go crawl in the tunnel. We're in the tunnel under the house. And um, he's like, hey, dog. And I'm crawling ahead of him. And we're crawling through mud and muck and all this filth. And he's like, hey, dog. And I'm like, what? And I turn around I'm like, what's up? And he goes, bro, you're not going to believe me. I can see. I'm like, what? He goes, I can see out of my eye, bro. And I'm like, you can see. And I'm, I'm, I've got mud all over me. I'm, and I had my phone in my top pocket of my dickies and I reach in there. I'm like, Hey Juan, let me, let me just, I got to, let me just get a short little proof of what's going on, you know? So I pulled it out and he was freaked out. He was, he was pretty freaked out. The whole thing freaked him out. He was like, you know, he was, he wasn't, you know, he wasn't a true believer and he got his eye healed. And so he wasn't sure what to do with that. So let me show you a quick bit of that. You can watch the whole thing when you have time. And then turn around so you can see what's going on there. We There's all the pipes. Not connected. Not connected. And, and so connected. see right there, I'm showing that, that, the, that the grouping of pipes that are coming out, that they're not connected. That's why we're in that tunnel. And then Juan's behind me now. So let's watch. Pain going out right there. Okay. Juan, my buddy, the plumber, I told you guys about. I told you, God keeps trying to get to this guy. Juan and I are in this hole fixing this plumbing again. It's incredibly weird. But, uh, so anyway, I've been telling Juan about, uh, you know, the 100% no line about, you know, Jesus turned the world upside down. Jesus is trying to get to Juan. So anyway, while we're in this hole, you know, I'm witnessing to him. So I'm going to pause this. I'm going to start another video real quick. The next part. So we're out there in front of the car. One has an eye, that eye right there, that he can't really see out of. Well, he told me that standing out by the car now. We're in the hole, and it's very dark in here, but we have these lights, and there's these pipes right here. There's writing on that pipe. Now, my Juan says, hey, dog, you're not going to believe me, but... I prayed for his eye out in front of the house, and I said, it'll come, you know, so now on, you just tell them what happened. Yeah, so I can see now. You can see now? Yeah. That's 100% true. Yeah. And when I met you, you said, hey, you hate lies, right? Yeah. And we both agreed that we would never lie to each other. Agree? Yeah. yeah. So your eye is better. Yeah. Just out of nowhere. Yeah. Anyway, praise God. Uh, looks like Juan's getting the call down in the tunnel it's pretty crazy bible said okay so anyway so i'm gonna pause it there you know you guys can go watch this the foundation one of the spirit popping up poppies anyway so so here's the point so what you're about to see on this next video is not research 
It's no different than that. It's no different than laying hands on a blind guy. Okay, the Lord said you'll give sight to the blind. He said you'll cast out demons. You'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. And here, here are some witnesses. Are I have other witnesses too, but these are on YouTube. The whole testimony about Starbucks with Alex and, you know, confronting Satan coming through a guy named Alex that was sticking out his tongue and winking the eye. So if someone wants to discount all that, that's okay. You're welcome to discount it. That's your deal, whatever. But, you know, people don't get to choose the consequences. The Bible said, you know, there's only one sin that will not be forgiven. That's blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. So when they told Jesus he casts out demons by Beelzebub, that was blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. That is speaking evil of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit was the mechanism, the source that was healing people. It was the source that was casting out demons. It was the source that was giving sight to the blind. So you can speak evil against the Son of Man or against the Father. But if you speak evil against the Holy Spirit, then you have condemned yourself to hell. So if I, if I cast out demons by Beelzebub and someone calls me a false prophet, then you're in good shape. But if I cast out demons by the power of God, and if I lay hands on the sick and they recover, through the power of the Holy Spirit, and you're attributing my gifts to a false prophet, do the math. Okay? It's, that's for y'all. And I don't care. Do whatever you want. But you have to live with what you do. Okay? Remember, so do I. I have to live with what I do. Every video I do, every testimony I give is the same as I'm in a court of law. I'm required to tell 100% truth. There's sometimes I don't feel like sharing everything with everybody. I don't want to share my personal testimony with everybody. The Lord told me I had to. I didn't want to. The Lord told me you have to. I don't want to disclose my identity, who I am in Christ. The Lord told me you have to. I'm like, okay, I'll do whatever you say. I've got the key of David. The Lord opened doors for me that no man can shut. I'm not afraid. So, it's time to gather the church, the New Jerusalem, a city not built with hands. You are all being built up as living stones into a holy temple for God to occupy. 1 Peter 2. Let me show you something, folks. 1 Peter 2, you're all being built up as living stones in a holy temple for God to occupy. Okay, we are a temple that's not being built with hands. We are a spiritual temple now that's being built. 1 Peter 2, here we go. 1 Peter, 1 Peter 2. And then now when I hang up this headset on this video, I'm going to get to work on uh, 1 Peter 2. I'm going to get to work on this long video I have in front of me. Okay, so there's a lot of people that think they're Christians. I will give it. They really think they are. They think their job is to go insult and belittle other people. They think that's their job. That was the Pharisees' job, by the way. That's what the Pharisees did. They made scathing accusations. We're supposed to operate out of the law of love that set us free. Making hate videos is not the law of love. That's just a no-brainer. Anyone with a brain knows that. doesn't take any, anyone with any intelligence to know that anyone making hate videos is not operating out of love. They're operating out of hate, which is of the enemy. Here we go. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, Disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed. And by the way, I'm going to show you who those builders are in this upcoming video. The, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. He is a stone of stumbling, and look at this, a rock, Petra, mass of rock. Same as Matthew 16, a rock of offense to those which stumble at the word. See, look, 
These are not people that stumble because they're godless, coke-snorting, hooker-chasing, partying, you know, wild people. These are people that think they know the word because it says it right there. They stumble at the word being disobedient. Watch. Even to them which stumble at the word, the logos. There it is. The logos. They stumble at the word. Like in the beginning, there was the word, and the word was with God. They don't know the word. If they knew the word, they wouldn't stumble at the word. By the way, Jesus is the word. So if they knew Jesus, they wouldn't be stumbling, would they? No. Here we go. He is a stone of stumbling, and there it is, and a rock of offense to those which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. So he is a rock of offense. Look at the word offense. A trap stick, bent sapling, that is snare. Okay, watch this. I'm going to copy that right there. So those that stumble at the word, because Jesus is a rock of offense, a trap stick, Bent sapling snare to those which stumble at the word. Let me prove it out. Here we go. Google images. I am going to copy paste. Look, right there, I just copy pasted. Right there is copy pasted exactly what's in Esor. There it is. Look, a trap stick, bent sapling snare. I just copied that. And now I'm going to put it right there, and I'm going to hit search, and there it is. And look, here you go. Meaning of offense right here. Scandalon, look. A trap stick, bent sapling, that is snare. What is it? There it is. It's a snare. It's a trap that turns you upside down. And when you step in it, there's a, this is called the trigger mechanism. Look, one part's right side up, the other part's upside down. See, right side up, upside down. And when you touch it, boom, you go upside down. Okay, there it is. Okay, so now I'm just making sure everybody knows. I'm dropping the scriptures on you. This is what the word said. Let's go to Matthew 16. So before I do this video tonight, before people come out and make an irreversible error, here we go. And so Jesus is asking people, who do people say that I am? Right there. He said, who do people say that I am? And they said, some say thou art John the Baptist. Some say Eliza, Elias and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Eh, everybody's wrong. And he said, but whom do you say that I am? And Simon Peter said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, the Christ, the anointed Messiah. And Jesus said unto them, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah. It means son of Jonas. Read the first part of this scripture. Okay, son of Jonas, for flesh and blood is not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. By the way, that who revealed Christ to me was the Father in heaven. The night I got saved, I prayed, Our Father, who art in heaven. Some people, as I say, I prayed to Michael. That's insane. Completely insane. That's that's a, that's a complete lie. Okay, here we go. Hang on one sec. Sorry, TV just popped on. Okay, so he said, I, My Father, which is in heaven, is the one that revealed this to you. And I say unto you that thou art Peter. Look at the number. 40, 74. It means a piece of rock. He said, I say unto you that thou art Peter, a piece of rock. And upon this rock, 40, 73, it means a mass of rock. He says, I will build my church. Now listen. He tells Peter, I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Look at the scripture number. 1, 6, Turn one six upside down, and what do you get? A one nine. Sixteen nineteen. That's why I colored it different colors. One six one nine. It's even in the scriptures 
the number bears witness to it. Matthew 16, 19. I will give to you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, what shall, what shall ever be loosed on, on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So here it is. Peter, little rock, and upon this rock, Petra, I will build my church. Now, no, no, no matter what anybody says right there, I just highlighted it. No matter what anybody on planet Earth tells you, no one can argue with that scripture because Jesus said it himself. He said, upon this rock, I will build my church. What rock? Well, here it is. Jesus was crucified right side up, and Peter was crucified upside down. There you go. One's right side up, one's upside down. In order to open the lock, you got to turn the one that's upside down right side up. The lock opens and the door opens. 100% nylon. Turn it upside down, Jonathan. So now I just used the scriptures and proved it out. Peter was the first rock to go on the new foundation. When you build a building, you start with the foundation. If you have a, you have a solid cement foundation, you start over at the cornerstone. And you start with the corner. Let's say you're doing cinder blocks. You put your first one down. Well, every block that's being put on this new church, which is the new Jerusalem, is upside down. Every stone is one that was upside down. Same as Peter. Because Peter was the first building block in the New Testament. He was the first one to recognize Christ. He was like, oh, you're the one that recognized me. Oh, I'm going to give you the key. There you go. There's the key. I just gave it to you. There is the key. So if you're upside down to open the lock, you got to go like that, don't you? Huh. Now, let me show you St. Peter's Basilica. Okay, so let's do uh, St. Peter's Basilica so I can show you the way the Lord showed me all this. Let's see. So there's a basilica right there. So when I was looking at this, let me see if I can orientate this real quick. Okay, so here we go. So this is the way I was able to see that this whole thing was a large serpent wearing a crown, was the Lord told me he wanted me to come in at a 45 degree angle I'm trying, this is a new version of it. I'm trying to navigate it real quick. Okay. Um. Anyway, so yeah, the way the Lord showed me this was, I was looking at this, but I'm trying to orientate it, but this is a different computer and it, it's not the same as my other, um, my other Google Earth. So I'm looking for, I'm looking for my rotation button here. But I don't, I don't see it. I don't see my, I don't see the button. So here, here's what I'll show you though. So I was looking down on this and the keyhole was up top right here. This round part was up here and then the skirt was facing down. And then I was looking at this part, the upside down cross right here, upside down in front of me right in front of me like that. And that's when I heard the Lord say, Jonathan, come in at a 45 degree angle. And I was like, that's weird. I heard specifically come in at a 45 degree angle. I heard the Lord say, I want to show you something. So I would, I, my orientation was right here. So when the Lord said, come in at a 45 degree angle, uh, yeah, this is a problem. This thing's got, is trying to load malware on my computer, so I can't do it. Anyway, so when I heard the Lord say that, I uh, I came in at a 45 degree angle, and sure enough, that whole thing turned to a serpent. That's how I discovered it. There we go. So there you go. Oh man, see how this thing's not uh. Yep. 
See, it's trying to load malware on my computer. So anyway, I'll just I'll just leave it like this. So here's the serpent. Here's the head of the serpent right here. And see the tongue right there coming out with the split, the split sidewalk. There it is. I mean, that is just that was when the Lord let me discover this entire building is a serpent and it's wearing a crown. But you could not tell that from a 2D perspective. I couldn't tell just looking flat at it. I had to be looking at it this direction. And then the Lord told me to come in at a 45 degree angle. And when I did what he said, it revealed the entire thing was a serpent wearing a crown. Now, here's the thing. That is my 100% truth testimony. So if someone wants to say I discovered these things because I'm a false prophet, that's okay. You can say that all you want. That's okay. But according to the word of God, if anyone attributes a supernatural spiritual gift of the Holy Spirit to the devil, then you blaspheme the Holy Spirit. That's what blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is. Blasphemy means speaking evil of the Holy Spirit. So either the Holy Spirit revealed that to me or the devil. You guys decide. Okay, so there you go. One or the other. So the Bible says whatever makes manifest is light. And Jesus said, I am the light of the world. The Bible says expose their evil deeds where your light shines. Reprove them, reprove them, and expose them. That's what I'm doing. I'm reproving this. So if someone thinks that I'm showing you that because the spirit of the devil's in me, well, that's okay. That would be the prince of the power of the air. You're, you're, you're fine to believe that. That's okay. But if you're wrong, then the Bible says it's the only unforgivable sin. So if I cast out demons by the power of the Lord God, which I'm telling you I do, then someone's made some very grievous errors. And that's not me calling down condemnation. That's the word of God. And we all have to play by the same book. So I play by the same book. That's why I don't go make false prophet videos. Because it's stupid. Totally stupid. Anyway, so anyone that's doing that, good luck with that. So there it is. There's the big serpent wearing the crown. There's the crown. It's also a keyhole with an upside down key that's the lock and there it is okay so tomorrow comes the drop i'm going to start organizing the rest of it right now and i may just keep going on this recording but it won't be ready till tomorrow so here's an update all right there we go